Hey, what's going on everybody? The Seer here with a special Cosmic Crucible video for you. Every few weeks during Cosmic Crucible, I like to do a deep dive analysis as far as what some of the defensive options that you can do, and then you pick and choose what defense you would like to use. In today's video, I'm using the MSF counter spreadsheet, and this has been created by Squatch Thulu. He's been doing this for a few seasons now, and you might have seen him around on Discord and Twitch. He's very active with the community, and this is a great resource that he has given to us, so I definitely want to give him props for this. Now, I do help him as far as managing some of the information where people will submit on the Discord some of the counters that he did, and then we add it to the spreadsheet. However, he does most of the work on this, so I definitely want to give him his shout out. Now, something that we're thinking about doing is updating the spreadsheet, and we would love some of the feedback from the community on this. Now, currently on the spreadsheet, there's a box on there where it says one shot. Since about 99.99% of the counters that we have on there are one shots, we're thinking of updating this to where it's going to say replay. So that way you'll know if this is going to be a live attack that they did, or if this is a replay of the attack, and that way you know if you're going to be able to see what abilities are used, what abilities were not used, because it kind of hides that when you do the replay option itself. He's also thinking of doing a HTML format, and we are also open to so many other ideas that you might have that we haven't even thought of ourselves. So if you have any ideas for this, feel free to go on Discord, message us on there, go on Reddit, comment on some of the YouTube videos. It doesn't even have to be this YouTube video. If you have an idea in the future, just feel free to comment in one of my YouTube videos, or just message me directly on Discord. I'm always open, so feel free to reach out. As far as the defenses that I'm going through today, I always upload the infographics probably about 24 to 48 hours after the video is posted. So feel free to join the Discord channel, that link's going to be in the description below. Without further ado, let's get into the defenses. For stage 1, Field Medic. This is the stage where on turn it clears all vulnerables from yourself and it heals by plus 20% of your max health for each vulnerable that is removed this way. Characters that have vulnerable, they also gain 25% resistance. I'll be using the full Infinity Watch in here. I know some people will use the Infinity Watch with Quicksilver. It really looks like it doesn't matter. I've tried using both defenses, and I've seen both defenses. They both pull the same amount of efficiency points as long as your Infinity Watch is fully built up, including the Moon Dragon. Now, if you don't have Moon Dragon built up, feel free to add Quicksilver in here. Some of the other good options that I've seen in here is the Mercs for Money with Black Knight. As far as the positioning goes, left to right is how it is on the infographic. Make sure that your Panda Pool is adjacent to the Black Knight. The main reason for that is when the Panda Pool drops below 50% health, Panda Pool gets the taunt on themselves. So that way you're always going to have a taunt out there, so if there's any splash damage, your Panda Pool's taking damage, and there's a better chance the taunt's going to pop up to protect your old man Logan. Another good option that I've seen in here is going to be the Spider Society, and that's the full Spider Society, including Spider-Man Noir and the Ghost Spider, because I know some people will try to sub them out and put Quicksilver in there. In Stage 1, the full Spider Society actually does pretty well. Even though they naturally clear off the vulnerables, I believe that's on Peter B. Parker's turn that happens, but if it's not that character's turn, as their turns come around, they're naturally going to be healing up, and we already know how much of a menace they are when they get going because of how resilient they are. Now something that I did find interesting on the spreadsheet is somebody put a kind of a leftovers X-Men team in here. So that would have been Rogue, Phoenix, Cyclops, Sunfire, Wolverine. I actually found that pretty interesting. There's so many good X-Men characters that got reworked and that's newer that this actually doesn't sound like a terrible idea. The efficiency looked to be the same as the Infinity Watch efficiency. So if you have your X-Men left over and you want to pull Rogue away from the extreme X-Men, this could actually be a pretty good option. The Alpha Flight team, you need Sunfire and Wolverine big anyways for the spotlight raids. Cyclops, you're going to have them big for the Extreme X-Men for the incursion raids. Rogue, you need her fairly built up anyways because of getting the Apocalypse. So having those four characters built up, Phoenix is kind of the outlier. If you don't want to put Phoenix in there, just throw another Unlimited character in there, or maybe another Alpha Flight character in there. I think this is actually a pretty good idea, so I definitely wanted to add it to this infographic. Stage 2, Blood Transfusion. On turn, you gain bleed. With bleed, you're going to gain an additional 5% damage per bleed. 
when applying bleed you gain defense up. Now the person whose turn it is, they're the one that's going to count as applying the bleed to themselves. The team that I'm going to be using in here is going to be the three piece mercs for money, Spider-Man Dwarf, and Zombie Juggernaut. Now last week I was using Nightcrawler in place of Spider-Man Noir. I want to pull Nightcrawler off and use him elsewhere. He works really good in this room with Old Man Logan, don't get me wrong. However, I'm trying to spread out my opponent's offensive capabilities and I think that if I put Noir in here with a pre-taunt, it's still going to pull about the same type of offensive weapon. So this would kind of stretch out my opponent's offense and hopefully cause them to slip up somewhere. That's my thought process behind this. Now again, as far as the placement goes, I'm running it where it's Old Man Logan, Spider-Man Noir, Deadpool, Panda Pool, Zombie Juggernaut. If you want, you can put Red Guardian or you can put Drax or Bishop there. It really doesn't matter. I just have a really big Zombie Juggernaut and if he ends up getting a turn and they don't get off of him, when he pops that special up, it's going to be pretty devastating. Now as far as the Nightcrawler option, that really helps out the Old Man Logan because he's going to give Old Man Logan an additional about 20 or 25% health, which is going to make him tankier. He's also going to give him evades on spawn, and when he does a special, it's going to give Old Man Logan speed up. So if you put Nightcrawler with Old Man Logan in stage 2, it's pretty devastating on your opponent, and it's definitely going to pull something. Another good option that you can put in here again is going to be that Spider Society. They naturally remove debuffs, so that way you don't really have to worry about those bleeds. I've seen some pretty good efficiency pulls when I was looking at the MSF counter spreadsheet, so that's why I put that on here. However, as you notice, we also had them in that stage 1 as an option. The Spider Society is such a great team, they really work in pretty much every single room, so whichever room you have left over, is, you can probably throw them there and it's a safe bet that that's going to pull something pretty good. Now the fourth team I want to go over is something that I run very similar in my stage 4 last week and it caused a lot of headaches. This one here is a little bit different. So we have a Rogue Gambit X-23 so if you have her built up this is a pretty good option that you can look at. There's Captain America and Black Knight. The thought process behind this is the Captain America is going to make it to where your Black Knight has Deflect and Deflect gives you a 100% block chance. Now when you block, it gives you pretty much an automatic 25% chance to resist anything that happens to you. So if somebody goes in there and tries to do, say, the Spider-Man Big Time Flip or Gwenpool Flip, there's going to be a, a pretty much a 25% chance it's not going to work. So that's why the Captain America works really good with the Black Knight as a pair. Now the team that I was running last week was actually in Stage 4, and instead of the Captain America, it was Forge in there, and it was pretty devastating. But we're going to look at that when we get to the Stage 4 as an option for you guys. Let's go ahead and check out Stage 3 next. Stage 3, Double Tap. On a successful hit, if the target has Exposed, perform a basic attack against that target. Characters with Exposed also have a minus 20% resistance to them, However, that doesn't really seem to come into play in this room from what we noticed so far this season. Most people are treating this either as a dead room or just keep using the Extreme X-Men in here. What I plan on doing in here is actually using that Extreme X-Men dorm. This got me a lot of victories last season. And for this season, for how big the Extreme X-Men are with dorm, I'm at about 3 million power. So it kind of makes sense for me to try to pull this in here and try to stretch out my opponent's efficiency. Now, no people have been using Masters of Evil or Masters of Evil with Doom to try to beat this room, but it's not like a hard counter, and I failed the attack, and I've seen several other people fail that attack as well. Especially if it's a massive punch-up, it gets very dicey on that. So that's why I'm going to be using that Extreme X-Men with Dorm in here. A safer route if you want. You can try to use, say, the Out of Time with Dorm, that's a pretty good efficiency pull for you. You can usually get in like the 8360, or if the opponent messes up, you might get that victory. Because that could be a little bit dicey of a matchup. It can just be a very taxing on the efficiency. That's why I really like that team, and I was running that for the past couple of weeks, and I'm just now going to be changing it to that extreme dorm. Now the third team that I want to talk about. It's a very interesting team, but it's going to be one of those teams where you kind of put all your eggs in one basket. 
So if you do the three piece Extreme X Men, where it's Nightcrawler, Gambit, Forge, add Rogue in there, and also add Old Man Logan in there, that makes your Old Man Logan very tanky because he's getting the HP boost from Nightcrawler and Gambit. So it's going to be a lot harder to take out. This is going to pull a very big team, usually a Cabal type. Now I'm very tempted to try this team out. However, I'm not ready to disband my Mercs for Money team when that team alone usually pulls like an Apocalypse or the Cabal. And I'm really trying to make them have a choice of either using Cabal in my Stage 2 or using it in a different room. So that's why I'm not ready to try this yet, but I'm very, very tempted and interested to give this one a go. The last team I want to talk about for Stage 3 is actually going to be the full Superior 6 team. Now I know a lot of people like to run this in Stage 5, however most of the counters for that are also going to be villains, which means that they also get the revive once. Also I know that people like to use their Lizard for offense. The Superior 6 team without Lizard is actually very easy to beat, especially now that people are pulling their Secret Defenders from defense. The Secret Defenders can easily take out the Superior 6 team if there's no Lizard involved. So that's why if you're going to run that Superior 6 on defense, try to throw the Lizard on there. Otherwise, it can be beat by so many different teams right now. But Lizard is such a great option for offense. That's why I don't like this team, but I understand why people do want to run this on defense. Stage 4, Under the Weather. On turn, clear all negative effects from the character. And on turn end, gain defense down, offense down, slow, and disrupt. So for this room here, it basically screams Black Knight. The reason for that is the retaliates put that trauma on the opponent, which means they will be keeping that defense down, offense down, slow, and disrupt. It's very devastating if they don't sack it or if they don't come in with the correct team. Now last week, I was using Gambit, Rogue, X-23, Forge, and Black Knight. Because I pulled Forge from this team so I can actually use him in that Sage 3, I'm replacing him with Captain America. The basic premise of this defense is when the opponent goes, they're going to be getting retaliated from Black Knight and they're going to be getting that ping from Gambit. Most likely they're going to get close or they will drop under that 50% health which means it's going to speed up my X-23 and then she's going to pop off on them as well. This room is very devastating and got me a lot of wins last week when I had the forge in there. I'm trying to test to see if the Captain America makes it worse or if it actually helps because I did pull that forge away from here. So I'm testing this out. I'm hoping Captain America works just as well. Another option that I like in here is going to be that out of time dorm. Again, this is just an efficiency team and the fact that Captain America and Peggy can cleanse those negative effects make it to where they can push that opponent into that efficiency game, which is one of the things that you're going to be aiming for this week. Now another team that's very devastating in here is going to be that 4 piece Spider Society with Black Knight. So if you pull the Spider-Man Noir out so you can use him in that room 2, add Black Knight in here, and again, this is a very devastating team. Black Knight's going to be doing those retaliates, which keeps those negative effects on the opponent. And the Spider Society team is able to cleanse those negative effects. Now, another route that you can go would be combining that Gambit Rogue with the Out of Time if you don't have that X-23 worked up. So anytime the opponent goes again, they're going to be getting hit with Black Knight, and they're going to be getting hit with Gambit. Let's go ahead and check out Stage 5 next. Stage 5, I'll be back. Villain characters on spawn can revive once at 50% max health. The team I've been using in here for a while now has been that Hive Mind Super Scroll. So the Hive Mind has two villain characters along with Super Scroll, so all of them is going to have that revive once. And also, the Hive Mind will have an additional chance to revive somebody because of that Red Goblin. Putting this team in here and having that Mercs for Money on defense basically makes it to where they have to pick and choose where they want to use their Cabal team. And if I can really make it to where they have to stretch out all of their offensive weapon, where they have to pick and choose where they want to use the offensive power, it basically makes it to where I have a better chance at winning. So that's why I've been doing this. Now another option that you can have in here is going to be the full Superior 6 team. 
by keeping the lizard with his team, it makes it to where it can't be easily countered by a new warriors or a secret defenders team. However, you're losing a pretty good offensive weapon in that lizard by keeping him on defense. The lizard and vulture, both those characters on that sinister six team, make it to where you have some really good utility for that offense. Now if you do want to go with that superior six on defense, an option that you can do is drop in the lizard, adding in the black knight. That gives another threat that the opponent has to worry about However, I personally feel that Black Knight is going to be better suited in the Stage 4 room, mainly because of the retaliate with the trauma, keeping those negative effects on there. However, I have faced the Superior 6 with the Black Knight in Stage 5, and that's a whole nother thread that people have to worry about because of that Superior 6 having those revived onces. And the last defense I want to talk about is a defense I really don't love anymore. It's mainly because it's ran its course, and that's the three-piece Secret Defenders with Morgan Le Fay and Emma Frost. I just personally feel that it's better suited to keep the Secret Defenders on offense right now because of what they can bring for you as an offensive weapon. Black Hat's able to remove the revived Onces, which counters Stage 5. The full Secret Defenders team is able to counter the Spider Society team, so by having this team on defense, you're losing out on that as well. Also, by putting Morgan Le Fay on defense right now, that's a weapon that you put on the bench when you could actually use Apocalypse and the Horsemen to help you counter that Mercs for Money team in Stage 2 or any other room that they end up going in. So that's why I really like this team up as a more offensive weapon right now, and I really don't like it on defense right now. Stage 6, Supercharged. After using an ultimate ability, spread all positive effects to adjacent allies. Also, ultimate abilities cost 2 less ability energy. Previously, I was running the full Spider Society team in here, but because I pulled Spider-Man Noir off of this team and I moved him over to Stage 2, I added Quicksilver in here as the 5th member. One of the main reasons I'm using this team here is because it's not only an efficiency sink, but it's a time sink. The way the positive effects get spread, it just takes so much time away from your opponent that it starts to really get in their head as far as timing them out or sinking their efficiency. It's honestly really frustrating how those positive effects are being spread because it takes so much time and takes you out of the game itself. So I'm not a fan of it, but I am going to be using that as a strategy against my opponent. Now another team that you can put in here is going to be that Black Order with Quicksilver. If you had them built very big and you had the positioning how I have it lined up right here, this could actually work for you. I know that Juicy's been running this for a while and he usually does pull a defensive win. It just never works for me. I need to get diamonds on my Black Order and them up to level 100 from 95 and I don't really want to invest in that right now. So my Black Order's just kind of sit in there at 2 million power when you really need it like 2.5 or higher to really get the full benefit of it. Now if you want to run the Hive Mind Super Scroll in Stage 6 as opposed to Stage 5 to really take advantage of the ultimate abilities costing that 2 less, the Hive Mind Super Scroll team is a pretty good option that you can have in here. By having the positioning as it is right now, it really can make it to where those positive effects really start getting spread, especially with how fast that Hive Mind team goes when they start knocking those characters under that 50% mark. So I can definitely see this being a pretty good option here. Personally, if I was going to go Hive Mind Super Scroll, it's if I wasn't doing it in Stage 5, I would run it in Stage 6 personally. And the last team I want to talk about in here was the team that we had in Stage 3 as an option. And that's going to be the three-piece Extreme X-Men, Rogue, and Old Man Logan. So if we look at the way these abilities are going to play out, Rogue is going to ult on turn one, which usually we don't want. We usually want her to do her special on turn one. However, Nightcrawler, Gambit, and Forge all will be ulting on turn one. And having it to where Old Man Logan can ult sooner is a pretty nasty thing that you can really do. For my round 3 matchup last week, I went against the 3 piece Extreme X Men, then they added Rogue and they had a North Star in there, and I almost messed that one up because that Gambit ulting on turn 1 definitely threw me off, especially with Nightcrawler ulting on turn 1, and the way those positive effects can really get spread out, 
Having this team in stage 6 I think can be sneaky good. I'm curious how this would play out if it would be better in the stage 6 room or a stage 3 room. If any of you guys end up testing this out let me know because I am actually very curious about that. But that is all of the defenses I want to go over with you guys today. If you did enjoy this and you actually got something from it please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also let me know in the comments below what you guys are going to be doing if you found any of these interesting or useful. Also if you have any tips or anything that you want added onto that MSF counter spreadsheet make sure to put that in the comments as well and I'm going to pass that over to Squatch Thulu and we'll see how we can kind of get that going. But that is all I have for you right now so until next time have a wonderful rest of the day.